Welcome to Wisdom from the Word. Bible Fellowship Church is a family of believers who want to help others discover and strengthen their relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're praying this message helps you strengthen your walk with Him. Now let's dive in. Good morning. This is Wisdom from the Word for May 27th. Our Proverbs for this morning come from chapters 21 and 25. In chapter 21, verse 9, it says, Better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Verse 19, Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Chapter 25, verse 24, It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Now, there are a number of different perspectives that can be taken on this proverb that that Solomon has written for us. Um, One might be, uh, ladies, do you allow yourself the habit pattern of being contentious with your husband or with the members of your family? Uh, A young man, if you're considering a woman for marriage, you might want to uh, consider looking and seeing if she's in the habit pattern of being contentious with her family members. If you're a husband who is married to a woman who, who does this or has her moments like this, you might find that rather than standing and quarreling with her, you're better off enjoying the starlit night from the top of your house or go for a walk in the wilderness. And there are a number of different perspectives that can be taken here on this, on these verses. But like many other things that were taught in the Old Testament, uh, things were clarified and or changed slightly when you get into the New Testament. So let me take you to Ephesians chapter 5. And starting in verse 22, here it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, there's a lot here uh, and and there's to, to unpack this could easily take up about four weeks worth of Sunday school classes um, and, and our time is limited. So let me just hit a handful of, of key items here relative to what we read in Proverbs. Um, husbands, are you leading well? Are you sacrificing some of your personal desires and your goals for the good of your spouse and of your family? Are you leading them well in, in your prayer time, in your reverence for Christ? as our king and as the head of the body of the church. Wives, do you look at your husbands the way you approach Christ in prayer? Do you praise him? Do you thank him for the sacrifices he makes on your behalf? Uh, Do you encourage him? 
Do you support him? Do you accept the decisions that he makes for you even though you don't agree with them all the time? One of the points that Paul makes here in his letter to the Ephesians is that the institution of marriage is something that God set up all the way back in Genesis chapter 2. And the reason for that is because that marriage institution is a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. He isn't just saying these things because he wants wives to be subservient to their husbands. Uh, as a matter of fact, the idea of a husband being sacrificial to the point of death for his wife is a little higher standard to meet. The point that he's making is if people choose to live this way, it just works. God set it up and gave us that instruction for a reason. And, and when homes live in harmony this way, when people are living for each other this way, it becomes a testimony, a testimony that, that is a blessing to the people involved, it's a blessing to the people around them, and, and it draws the unbelievers to Christ because they see this working, they don't understand how or why, and it gives you the opportunity to share Christ with them. So I guess the big thing to, to take away from this is the world will tell you differently. The world will tell men, go after the gusto because you only go around once in life. And the world will tell wives, don't be subservient to anyone. And yet the scripture tells us just the opposite of that situation. And there's reasons for that. And, and it's a blessing when we follow it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how it exhorts us to live differently. We thank you for the promises in your word on the way you will bless our lives if we just take your word seriously and trust you for what you want in our lives. Father, give us the strength to go against the tide of the world and to live in a way that that, that you prescribe so that we can enjoy those blessings. And Father, give us courage and give us to be prepared to share your gospel with those when they ask about the way we live. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for listening this morning. And always remember, if we do what the Word says, His promises are true. Thank you for joining us for Wisdom in the Word. If you're looking for additional resources to help strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ, visit bfcsebring.com or download our mobile app.